let us all that we can to build a better future. Jose Vega, not by any other protesters. It's another one who is uh, calling out the Democrats for many a reasons. As to, as AOC is, uh, I almost had a stutter there. I almost said Tulsi. AOC, 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 during a town hall about the Green New Deal and environmental justice developments. Oh, oh okay, AOC. Okay, AOC. Now, the video is one big disorganized mess, but it is interesting to see how she handles it. And, of course, how all the AOC sycophants, the vote blue no matter who crowd, the remnants of the Bernie Sanders movement, uh, automatically yell at the person to shut up and be quiet. So shout out to, want to give a shout out to them, a hot spot. And I found this little gem here. So let's play it for all you beautiful people so you can see it firsthand. It's as a, five years of the Green New Deal. Hey, how's that five years of Green New Deal treating you? Type one for, oh, kid, it's great. The planet's great. Everything's great. I'm feeling just fine. At type two, man, it's all nothing but bull. The Green New Deal is one big green turd. A lot of environmental justice provision for clean air in our schools and also kind of the education space. Uh, in 2020, the CARES Act passed. In 2021, we started to see a lot of different... Uh, My name is Jonathan David. We're not the Atlantic Congress against AOC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well jumped in a pit full of army ants right now, buddy. say a lot of people did show up for this one well, well well done aoc for bringing people in did you give them a free free pizza or something Now, uh, what they're yelling about is uh, the border crisis, madness, and insanity. I'm only playing this because it's it's just it's it's interesting to see an, an event get disrupted. You know, um, again, there's there's probably a better way. You know, if you had much more of a presenting voice, if you're going to be critical, you just can't be just yelling over and yelling over. Just be sure to have your points concise and to the point, and how you're going to speak out. You know, but. You, you see how AOC is, uh, you know, holding herself, trying try, try not to get the whole you are being rude. But if you ever want to see a bunch of sheep, you know, we all remember the days of ECW. The chance will get ready for the chant of AOC. Sheep, 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 sheep. Now that chant died quick. Yeah. <laughs> 
God, you gotta love New Yorkers. New Yorkers, you never disappoint. Why'd you make me shut up? I'm walking here. New York, I know you're being gentrified and hell. Whatever remains of the spirit of New York is slowly withering away, but you keep on fighting to that last breath, all right? You just keep on saying, why don't you make me shut up? Come on, New York. You're not you're, you're not fully attached to the soy, gluten-free, organic stuff yet. Come on, New Yorkers. You got that dog still in you. You only represent the illegal aliens in New York. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And by the way, if you are going to be calling out AOC, you got to do it properly. AOC, AOC, AOC. Uh, anyways, anyways, <laughs> you got, you got, you got, you got to have more of a tune in it. Not like AOC. You got to, you got to bring some more passion into it. Come on, Democrats. Come on. I know there's enough people who study liberal arts to be in the Democratic Party to do a little bit more of a chant. Do a little more of passion into it. Come on. Don't let me down here. Don't let me down here. Don't let me down here, Democrats. Come on. You constantly let me down. You better be on point next time. Clearly, uh, this community, Astoria, Jackson Heights, also across the Bronx, clearly support uh, progressive immigration policies that welcome to our Now, who does AOC represent? Well, she's going to be representing her own interests. And also, AOC, I don't know if you realize, but the mayor of New York City, well, he's just a struggling, just like the mayor of city of Chicago and they, all these other sanctuary cities in which a lot of migrants are kind of left hole in the bag, which in turn is causing a lot of resentment for said citizens in said sanctuary cities. There's a powder keg that's about to explode, especially here in my city. And there's no real solution that's being done to make anyone happy because people are being used as pawns. The migrants are being used as pawns by Republican politicians to put them in sanctuary cities. And of course, the Democrats are using the migrants as pawns. As, oh, look how better we are than the Republicans. But yet these sanctuary cities are going broke and belly up. And also, guess who's also being used as pawns? We, the citizens. We, the citizens who have not only been divided against each other, but now there's so many other factors that are causing and, yes, building up further resentment and anger. I don't know what lies in store for us for the spring and summer of 2024. Just uh, do me a favor, everybody. Keep your heads on a swivel. are very, very loud, but they're very, very few. And we have to look around to realize how many of us are here in support of our neighbors and in acknowledgement of the fact that virtually almost all of us um, are descendants of immigrants or indigenous people or, uh, or uh, enslaved people uh, as well. And so I thank you all so much. Let's move it on. Yes, let's move on to the Green New Deal. Let's move on to all this other good stuff. But wait, AOC, listen, you got you got you gotta be clear here. Hold on, because I just have to pull up this article here. Because it does stand true. Where AOC mocks Biden for doing Trump impressions on the border crisis because the kids are still in cages, AOC. The kids are still there. The kids are still being used. And uh, by the way, a lot of migrants are being pushed around in all these different sanctuary cities. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez issued a warning to President Joe Biden following reports that he may use a new executive order amid an uptick in migrant uh, arrivals at the U.S.-Mexico border because the sanctuary cities cannot hold 
The sanctuary cities are going broke, especially in my city, the city of Chicago. And I've had on my show Jamal Green, who explained in detail some of the squalor conditions inside of some of these uh, facilities and sanctuary buildings in which many of these migrants are at. Don't forget that when they came here to Chicago, I'm just going to use site Chicago as an example. A lot of these migrants were in front of police stations, police stations. That's a horrible sight to see. Biden has sought, act, sought to take action to strengthen the border security measures at the southern border. It continues to see high levels of migrant co crossings, especially as we're seeing a lot of Republican governors uh, send the National Guard to the border, especially most notably in Texas, to secure it because they feel that the Biden administration isn't doing anything to secure it. The border situation created a political headache for Biden as he seeks re-election in November. Republicans have blamed his policies for the increase, though experts know external political and economic factors may play a substantial role in driving migration. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this article because of that sentence right there, because I'll tell you what's driving the migration. Former Democratic and Republican politicians, Democratic and Republican presidential administrations that did coups and regime change wars in Central and South America, that continued the war on drugs, that continued the rise of much instability for people living in said countries that were impacted by U.S. sanctions or coups or the rise of the cartels. And so a rational person who's probably been living under the threat of a dictator, a tyrant, a warlord, a drug lord, are going to do everything they can to get them themselves out of an irrational situation and doing the arduous march to the United States. That's what's causing the crisis. Now, you think AOC, for all that time being in Congress, that she would have the strength, the courage to really call out her, well, her colleagues in the Democratic Party, but that's not going to happen. But gone are the days of obedience, subservience, and kindness. What I want to see is more politicians being called out, as they should, as they always should, because these politicians shouldn't feel safe when they're doing these town halls. They need to realize that there are angry people out there, and the number one issue won't be identity politics or social justice issues, or anything else of that nature of what Donald Trump may say. As we continue on through 2024, the main issue is going to be the economy. Because people are hurting, and when people are hurting financially, and they have no solution of how they're going to find a way to survive for tomorrow, get ready to see more politicians be called out. I hope this is the beginning, that we see more of these politicians being challenged. Because they shouldn't feel like, oh, they could say whatever they want, and no one's going to call them out for their hypocrisy. This election cycle is going to be interesting. It's not going to be the most important, but it'll be the most interesting.